So we begin with the gift of serving. This is the second spiritual gift that we consider in these series. Our text verse is Romans chapter 12, verse number 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. To begin this lesson on the gift of serving, let's see who in Scripture best illustrates the motivational gift of serving. And that person is Timothy. Now the guidelines that are given in our text for the gift of serving are these. Kind affection, brotherly love, and honoring others. The basic principle the server needs to exercise most is that of authority. Not only in being submissive to authority, but also exercising authority when it is necessary. Now we might ask, why is this true? Because it gives the server protection for the management of his or her time. Now in all of these gifts, it can be a man or a woman. It doesn't make any difference, male or female. Let's look at characteristic number one. The server sees and meets practical needs. Important needs that would seem insignificant to other people catch the eye and the attention of the server. The server can pinpoint a need, a physical need, quicker than anybody else. Now, they might detect a spiritual need, but a server is more inclined to see a physical need than someone else. When you meet the physical needs of someone, they become more inclined to listen to spiritual things. Now, that's the reason that medical campaigns are highly successful, especially in third world countries. Because you have a team of doctors and nurses and and practitioners that will go into an area and uh, are invited by uh, a missionary and they go to the area and they set up a clinic and they will endeavor to meet the needs, the health needs, the physical needs of the people, the health needs especially of people as they come. But when they come, they also hear the gospel. And literally hundreds have been saved through these methods. Several years ago, my wife and I, we were on one of the first, I guess, it wasn't quite ABA sponsored yet at that time, it is now. But many who participated in that medical campaign in Mexico became some of the ones that are the backbone of the ABA's medical campaigns now. Macedonia, medical MacMed, and literally hundreds of people have been saved because their physical needs have been met, or at least their their health needs have been met. Then they are more inclined to listen to the gospel than they might otherwise. And you take the native missionaries, and they will be ministering to the people spiritually while the health care team are taking care of their needs. It's effective. The American Medical Association is not the only one that does this, but it's it's been proven. When you meet the physical needs of a person, they are more inclined to listen to what meets their spiritual needs. So a server would be one of the first to pick up on the physical needs of a person. However, the server knows that by meeting them, he And any time you see in this series, you see he, uh, unless I specify differently, you can say he or she. He will bring encouragement and strength to those who receive his help. Timothy's serving ability is noted by the Apostle Paul. He said in Philippians chapter 2 verse 20, For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Now Paul is writing to the to the church at Philippi, and he said, and all of the people, that worked with Paul and served with Paul, there would be no one who would have the same mind as Paul who would see their needs and be able to direct them in how to meet those needs. And you know what he says, who will naturally care. This was Timothy's forte. It came to him. It was an ability 
the gift that God gave him, and Timothy was good in using. Let's look at the misuse. Giving unrequested help. Sometimes the task which the, the server sees appear to be more important to the server than the one being served. Because the server sees this need, will start to try to help this person meet that need, and the, the person will just, uh, wait a minute, what, what are you doing? And it, many times they will put people off. They will not recognize the fact that they, they are not as cognizant of that need as the server is. And obviously that's going to turn a person off and drive them away. So a server has to be careful about that. It may be even that the one who has the needs is not aware of them to the same degree that the server is. You say, how is that possible? Well, easy. Because of the keen insight that the server has. So a server has to be careful not to cross a boundary there. You cannot help someone who does not want help. You try to help someone who does not want to be helped or doesn't realize that they need to be helped, and you will drive them in the opposite direction. And sometimes that will put up an impenetrable barrier there. and They will never be responsive to the gospel again. So a server has to be very careful. In either case, a server who uses his initiative in meeting these needs may be judged as pushy or intrusive. A busybody. Your nose is in my business. Just put it out. Get it out of there. So you can see how that a server trying to do what they do best can be rejected. All right, the next characteristic, free others to achieve. The joy of the server is not just initiating tasks, but knowing that through them he's bringing a peace of mind to another person, which will allow that person to be more productive in the tasks that God has called him to do. Timothy served Paul so that Paul could carry out his ministry. His serving, Paul said, was as a son with a father. Philippians 2.22 Timothy was not Paul's biological son, but Paul considered Timothy to be his son. He was Timothy's mentor. He was Timothy's father in the ministry, if you will. And much of the training that Timothy received, especially in his adulthood, was from the Apostle Paul. Of course, Timothy had a very good foundation with his mother and his grandmother, whom Paul acknowledges that Timothy had a good start with those two women. Let's look at the misuse. Letting things be too important. Now, the things here would be physical. In order to meet the needs of others, servers will often neglect their own home and personal responsibilities. Now, a pastor with this gift of serving, if he's not careful, will cause a lot of problems in his home because he will be so involved in meeting the needs of the congregation that he neglects his home and his own family. And, of course, that can lead to disaster. Many pastors have this problem anyhow, but the one with the gift of serving would be more inclined to do this and not even realize it. By the time that the pastor server realizes what's happened, disastrous results have already set in. They'll meet the serving needs at home, but leave other needs unmet. In other words, they'll try to take care of the physical things, but they won't try to take care of all the other responsibilities that are there that are not physical. The transfer of attention may cause reaction by the server's family and the, by the one being served that too much attention is being put on physical things. It's like a father giving the wife or the children gifts or things like that, to the neglect of the emotional and spiritual needs. And the family may become resentful of that, thinking, oh, you're trying to buy my love. When that really is not the case. But that's the way that it will come across. But the server is more focused on the physical needs there. So a server has to train himself or herself to not only see physical needs, but spiritual ones as well.
And actually, the spiritual ones are the most important. The next characteristic is disregard for weariness. Because the server sees the importance of the tasks which he has begun, he will freely use up personal assets of time, money, and strength. I've told you my wife has a gift of serving. And even from the early days of our marriage, there would be many times she would be going here and there and doing this and that and the other and always staying busy. And I would say, honey, slow down a little bit. Come and rest a little bit. No, no, I've, I've got to get this done. Later on, as as the years of marriage went, I would say, okay. <laughs> I say, you don't know when to stop. You're worn out now. Stop and take a little bit of rest and then go back to it. But a server has a tendency to get the job done, regardless of the results of them doing it, pushing. Sometimes the server's health suffers because of it. The server will have a tendency to give and give and give. You say, wouldn't that be a, a, a giver? No. The gift of giving is the management of monetary things, especially, and the obtaining of those. The server doesn't have the gift of obtaining it, but the server does have the gift of being able to use that. If that's what it takes to meet a physical need, a server will take it. And a server will go out of their way. When I say out of their way, I use this negatively. To use something at their disposal in order to help someone else. Now, my wife has learned, and I'm using her as an example because she does have the gift of serving. She has learned not to take that too far. In other words, she if we have some extra and she sees a need, she's going to take that extra to meet that need. But she will not go beyond to cause us to have that same kind of need. She won't cause us to have problems because of meeting that need. But you let her get a little bit of surplus and, and we don't have anything immediately to do it with. She sees something, she's going to take care of it. That's the gift of a servant. And I'm not saying that negatively. That's His focus is not on himself, but rather the completion of the tasks which he knows will benefit the individual and bring joy to himself. She loves to see something complete. And that's a that's a positive. Now, in doing our work around here, those of you that have been working with us around here, you'll see that she will keep pushing to get the job done before we quit. Of course, she's like the rest of us now. The physical strength gives out before the task is done. All right, let's look at misuse. Working beyond physical limits. Inner tension results in physical ailments and especially stomach problems often occur in servers. And it causes problems with the server because the body is worn out, they don't have the strength to complete the job, and they feel guilty for not getting it done. And that sets up a problem on the inside. This condition is a consequence of extending themselves either on one job or taking on too many jobs. We know that Timothy had physical ailments by Paul's instruction to him to take medication for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. 1 Timothy 5.23 Really, I think if we knew everything behind this, Timothy probably was prone to push himself too far. All right, the next characteristic. Difficulty in saying no. As the server effectively meets one need, others may ask for similar help, not realizing the inner motivation of the server. These requests, however, are difficult to turn down because they represent needs and the server feels obligated at having been asked. This is actually a positive and a negative. The negative would come in to play when the server is just not able to fill the request. But because the server has difficulty saying no, they would feel guilty at not being able to do that, even though others look at the physical limitations and say, 
don't feel guilty. Don't feel bad about not being able to do that. But this is how the server feels. We understand that with a server. Then we can help them deal with that. The misuse, neglecting God-given priorities. Servers are often placed in positions of responsibility because they are diligent workers. And it's easy for them to volunteer a helping hand or become involved in tasks which they should be delegating to others. I think she's learned it now, but it took my wife a while to learn to delegate. I'd rather do it myself. I know it'll get done right. And I would say, yes, but, and there we go. The imbalance causes the server's authority to become frustrated because assigned tasks are not completed on schedule. The old adage is, I can do it better myself. <laughs> sometimes that's good, but sometimes that's, that's not always the best thing either. Characteristic. Alert to likes and dislikes. Those with the gift of serving have an amazing ability to find out and remember the special interests of the people they serve. Now, th thus, birthdays and anniversaries are special occasions for them. We'll never forget, I say we, I'm, just, I'm the tag along. We'll never forget an anniversary or a birthday of our children or grandchildren. We'll never forget it because she won't forget it. And she'll always have something special for them. Now, people may not always remember her birthday and our anniversary, but she will not forget the anniversaries of our children. And she always has something special. Father's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays, and anniversaries. She always has something special for them. She's good at that. Now, if she goes before I do, that's going to come to an end because I just won't remember they often recall favorite foods, special colors, types of home furnishings, and favorite activities and use this knowledge in making occasions special. Misuse. Reacting to overlooked needs. A server may react to people around him who, in his judgment, walk right past obvious needs. I guess if there ever was a continuing bone of contention in our marriage, this would be it. Because I just don't see what she sees always. And I, she said, didn't you see that? What are you talking about? I, I don't have the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Well, it's just plain as nose on your face. Not in my face. He assumes that others see what he sees. If he tells someone about a need and that person doesn't follow through on his suggestion, the server may become resentful. Now, that's part and parcel of the gift of serving. I told you there were negatives to these as well as positives. Characteristic. Needs approval. Appreciation confirms to the server that his work is necessary and that it is being blessed by the Lord. The server also desires clear direction. Paul gave Timothy more praise and precise instructions than any other assistant. Servers prefer working with a person rather than for a person. Misuse. <laughs> Resenting lack of appreciation. If a server is given a physical job simply because he's a server, and is expected to get his joy from doing it, he may feel misused and react in anger. He will then fail to remember that he's working for the Lord. A server's perspective may also be lost if the one whom he is serving is not making wise use of his time. The next characteristic likes short-range projects. The tasks which attract a server are usually immediate needs. The server often becomes frustrated with long-range planning or a continuous task which seems to have no visible progress. Now, in the beginning, we were right the opposites. She would see short range, I would see long range. And she couldn't see long range. But then we went to Jamaica. And we found that we had to plan as far as two years out for things. Especially when we would have teams that would come down. 
We had to know exactly, and we had to know when. And she learned, she added that to her serving repertoire to not only see the short-range goals and needs, but also the long-range. You know, and that's what we are to do. We are to take our gift, and we are to refine it, make it better. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Timothy was encouraged to maintain endurance as a good soldier and to continue in the calling which he was given of God. 1 Timothy 4.16 Paul said, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 2 Timothy 2 verse 3 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. The misuse. Working people around their schedule. Because of the server's lack of desire or ability to properly delegate tasks, he will often develop his own time schedule and force others to adapt to it. Lack of delegation may also hinder the family from feeling involved in his serving and cause them instead to feel that they are taken for granted. The next characteristic puts extra touches to jobs. The server knows that by doing more than is expected, he will not only delight the one being served, but demonstrate that he is doing it unto the Lord. Going the second mile for a server may be trimming and sweeping after mowing the lot, or putting a bow and a flower around the lunchbox. Now, we're both this way, so I'm not sure if that's just the server or I have learned to adapt that part either. There's a way to mow the lawn and a way not to mow a lawn. If you just mow the lawn and you've got a lot of grass in heaps and rows or things like that, or you don't trim things up with a weed eater, etc., you haven't completed the job. Just as we've been cutting and trimming on our trees here on the church property, the job is not done until that is disposed of. Sometimes that's an extra touch. A server will do extra to make sure that it looks good and that it is good and will go in extra effort and energy, if you will, to see that it is done. Misuse, being frustrated with time limits. A server may react to a rigid schedule, not realizing that it is for his own protection. He may feel that it hinders him from the joy of additional serving. Twice, Timothy was told by Paul not to get sidetracked. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Do thy diligence to come before winter. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 and 21. Characteristic. Meet needs quickly. In an effort to complete the tasks, a server will try to avoid committees and what to him appears to be unnecessary red tape. In order to avoid delays, the server will use personal funds. Misuse. Interfering with God's discipline. The purposes of God may be frustrated when a server meets a need that God intended to bring about repentance. Now, both of us have struggled with this over the years. If a server would have met the physical needs of the prodigal son while he was in the sty, it would have hindered his return. And the problem is this. How far do you go in helping people and yet don't get in God's way for doing something that he's trying to do with this person. We've struggled with that through the years. When you see a need and you have the means to meet that need, you have to be careful. You want to meet the need. You want to help. But yet there are some times when God doesn't want you to because he wants that person or, or persons to go through something in order that they might learn the difference comes in knowing when and when not. And that's where that we we try to make sure that we are responsive and in tune with the Holy Spirit to make sure that we do not interfere in what God wants done. And and, and this is a struggle still to you know, how far do you go in helping people without getting in the Lord's way? All right, does this describe you? 
You notice the practical needs of others and enjoy meeting them. You enjoy serving to free others from more important things. You're willing to neglect your own work to help others. You sometimes go beyond your physical strength in serving others. You can remember the likes and dislikes of others. You can usually detect ways to serve before anyone else can. You will even use your own funds to get a job done quickly. You do not mind doing jobs by yourself. You do not want public praise, but you do need to feel appreciated. You find it difficult to say no to those who ask for help. You like to put extra touches on the jobs you do. This is the person who has the motivational gift of serving.